interesting session from Lena there on how to feature-proof an organisation through location strategy. Now before I continue, allow me to introduce Albrecht Altenhona, one of our GVS experts who will be joining me here in the studio throughout the course of the conference. I'll be leaning on their years of experience that they have in shared services. Hello Albrecht, how are you today? Hi, I'm very happy to be here. How have you found the conference this morning? I found it amazingly inspiring. It was very inspiring so far. Yeah, great session so far. Absolutely. And Mohit Bhatia, welcome to the studio. Thank you so much for your opening plenary this morning. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now, I have so many questions for you. Um, I'm actually going to ask one. You only touched upon it for about a second, but it's about the commercialization of your GSC. It's a question that some of my clients over the past year have really started asking and I wanted to ask you how have you gone about this particularly with some of the challenges around competitive advantage? The challenges around? Competitive advantage as you commercialize and monetize your GSC organization. To be honest uh, when we started out it wasn't in a structured fashion mm. uh, or in any scientific way but more recently over the past few years um, we have created what we are calling future service models and service delivery models which we have uh, worked out with the logic of what kind of work should be done from where. So as an example in finance, what should remain in headquarters, what should be done in an area or a region, and what should be done in a GBS environment. So now it becomes amply clear to everybody at Marisk around the world what you need to do from where. And there's no argument, there's no negotiation, and otherwise it used to be leader-led. You had a big sponsor in, say, in APA region, who would want to do more work with you and somebody in Europe saying, no, I don't want to do it. So we're getting past that. And uh, I gave a finance example, but it's uh, equally true of our commercial activities, our contracting activities, and our various other supply chain activities. Fantastic. I remember that you were yesterday, I mean, first of all, fantastic speech. Thank you very much Thank for you. that and uh, for all your success with, uh, with Mels. I remember that uh, yesterday you were in our uh, ESG lab, and uh, I would be very curious, since Merz has very, uh, very ambitious targets uh, regarding net zero, how do you want to play the competences of your GBS to support that journey? Yeah. So we're at that stage of uh, evolution at Merz where we have very bold ambitions. Uh, we're going to make external commitments. And then we're going to have data and analysis beyond what we want to do for external commitments but we want to do it for our board and our management team. So we want to get pretty aggressive in how we measure ESG overall and DCAP particularly. Uh, the stage of evolution that we're in is that it's right now being centrally controlled because we need to make sure that all the KPIs that we are defining, the kind of output and dashboards that we'll be publishing are done in a controlled environment and, and, and are, are aligned to what the regulators want, are aligned to what the industry wants. Uh, as you know, some of these regulations are still flexible, right? Oh, yeah. Once that is done, and we are very clear about what, what needs to be reported, that's when our GBS will come in and start doing the heavy lifting and start doing the reporting and the analysis and we set up the processes around it. No different from uh, financial external reporting, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in financial external reporting, you're clear, hey, this is IFRS rules. This is exactly how you do RevRec and this is how you do other things. So it's easy, the GBS can do it all. Mm -hmm. The moment we reach that stage of clarity, hey, this is what we need, that's when the GBS then pulls in. And takes it home. So that's how we're really thinking. Right now, it's centralized. Yeah. Very interesting, especially I think uh, this is moving so quickly. So probably when we meet in a year's time, you will be have already much, much more. I hope so. Yes. Indeed. Indeed. There's one more thing what I liked um, very much in your presentation, and that was everything around customer. So in there, I have uh, I have a two pronged questions. I would say first of all, how do you ensure? that uh, all your employees in the GBS keep always the customers as a first point. And second, what additional services do you envisage to offer to your customers? Sure, thanks. The uh, customer centricity at Maersk overall and including our GBS is a historical culture that we have gradually built over time. This is not something that we told people by Monday morning you have to be customer centric. <laughs> So it's, uh, it takes time to build that, and it starts from the top. You know, people need to see the behavior of the leaders and the managers. 
Are they being customer centric? Are they putting the customer before them? Uh, and that really uh, makes a huge amount of difference. Um, we used to use the word customer centricity, and um, our current CEO, Vincent Clark, he changed that to customer obsession. Uh, the small thing he did by changing the word, but it really conveyed to the larger organization that we always need to be in the customer shoes first. I, if I'll take the liberty of uh, mentioning the anecdote, mm -hmm. uh, we had an annual leadership conference in last year, late last year, where uh, Vincent, the CEO, had a session on customer centricity and being in the customer shoes. And the anecdote here is that um, one of our customers, and it's public, so Puma, he ordered 100,000 pair of shoes from Puma with the Merce logo on the shoe and gave it to every employee in the company as a gesture of how important it is to be in the customer shoes. So, you know, this is just uh, superb stuff, but in our industry, more than any others, it is very important to be customer obsessed. You know, we are not selling retail products. It's not a B2C business. It's not that every Oreo cookie is going to look the same. Um, our contracts are very complex, you know, big companies, multinationals, global supply chain, they want to do something in warehousing, something in logistics, trucking, rail, ocean, air. So we have to be really understood of their needs. And unless we really take the time, it's not cookie cutter that this is the solution we want to give you. You have to really understand their needs. There's no choice but to be customer obsessed, to have a successful relationship with, with, uh, with the customer. What was the second part? The second part of the question was on uh, new products. Uh, I don't believe I'm qualified to answer that, but I'll give you something related to environment and, uh, and ESG. We already launched an offering which we call Eco Delivery. Eco Delivery is a product that we offer as an option to customers so that where we ensure that those products are transported only in ships that run biofuels and not fossil fuels. Now, we're not into green methanol yet, so I mentioned in my speech that we got a first vessel on green methanol. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a gradual and slow journey. But we already have biofuels that can work on the same vessel engine, right? Instead of fossil fuels or low sulfur fuels. And that's an offering already in the market. And I'm happy to say that customers are buying into it because they also want to deal with providers who are giving them eco friendly offerings. So that's one I can talk about. Great. Fantastic. And if I can ask a question, Mohit, um, just following up to your, from your customer experience, uh, response. How do you, how does your GBS organization get closer to your customers? To our external or internal customers? Both, right? Because I think you, you have an integrated yeah. offering. So as far as uh, internal customers are concerned, let's start with that. Uh, I will volunteer that it's been a journey. Um, up to six, seven years ago, we used to get constructive criticism mm -hmm. from our internal business stakeholders. And I'll volunteer that they used to say, hey, once we give the work to the GBS, they close their doors and you know, then they say, hey, just leave us alone, which is not the best uh, way to function. I'm happy to say it's no longer the case for the last half decade. It's a very transparent and open GBS. Um, while we work as one cohesive unit, which has a lot of benefits on culture, branding, common messaging, at the same time, we leave it completely open for them to have you know, dotted lines all over the world to functions. Uh, we are not hierarchical, we're not protocol driven. I'm the head of our GBS, no one goes through me. <laughs> it's all direct to their teams. And uh, it's become very transparent. And the same people who used to give us that constructive criticism are today our biggest sponsors. So uh, I, I think we've come a long way uh, with uh, some of our stakeholders. We also take the effort of understanding their needs and their pain areas uh, and, and have a two-way communication and dialogue. As far as external customers are concerned, um, we have some very large customers and some very small customers. If it's very large customers, we want to make sure we don't do something fancy on our own and we keep the key account managers in the loop and we do it in a collaborative fashion. But I'll tell you, we've done some crazy stuff like flown people from our GBS to the customer site because our collections process depends on their AP process, right? And often, their processes are so complex in their company that we've gone and helped them sort it out because they also want to pay on time. They don't want to be difficult. So we've had mutual conversations with customers to sort out GBS problems and uh, therefore ensure that the company's output Fabulous. and DSOs are better. No, apologies for interrupting. <laughs> Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you very much.
let's head back to the plenary. Thank you.